I, I am Tyson of Tyson Coaching, and I am the next guest on The Inspiring Show. Welcome to The Inspiring Show with Paul and Jennifer Hensel, featuring inspiring interviews with thought leaders, storytellers, entrepreneurs, influencers, and legacy builders just like you. Learn from experts about finding your voice, mastering your mindset, and creating movements with your message. Tap into timeless wisdom and today's top strategies for transcending to new levels of success, happiness, and joy. Hello, everyone. This is Paul Hensel from The Inspiring Show. On today's episode, I interviewed Tyson Sharp down under in Australia. Now, Tyson's mission is to introduce a heightened level of consciousness into the world of business. Tyson has coached hundreds of online business owners, helping them transcend their patterns of fear, doubt, and frustration so they can build a more conscious business as an extension of their personal awakening. He believes that when you build a business from flow, creativity, and alignment, you can't not thrive, and you will create the difference in the world you are being pulled towards by your heart. So I hope you enjoy today's episode with Tyson Sharp. Thank you so much for joining me today, Tyson. It's a pleasure to have you as a guest. Now, I want to lead by saying my wife and I are very impressed because you're all about helping and connecting people. Yeah, no problem. For some reason, that's my superpower. And uh, one of the superpowers is connecting people and just coming from a place of service. So that's just what I'm following at the moment. Now, you've made some big changes in your life. Could you share with us like where you were at before that that prompted you to make these, these lifestyle changes? Yeah, sure. So I I basically studied psychology in university. It was the only interest I had uh, going in through school. And so just following society, I jumped into psychology in university and I was sort of studying and and learning about my, uh, my interests for six years. And then all of a sudden leaving university, had no clue what I wanted to do. I know I didn't want to become a psychologist and work with mental disorders. Um, but I, fu- I found myself like a lost little puppy and no clue what to do. Um, so I basically jotted off to Canada and lived in Canada for two years. Oh. And, uh, and it, was, it was there where I learned the difference between happiness and fulfillment because I was happy day in, day out. I was traveling, I was snowboarding, I was meeting new people, I was having fun. Um, but deep down, I had like this, whenever someone asked me about what you wanted to do for a career or where you wanted to take psychology or do you want to become a psychologist? I got like this, this heaviness in my stomach, uh, because I was lacking that fulfillment, that direction, that, uh, the purpose and meaning that many people, um, that many people talk about. And that's, that's what, uh, that's what I felt in, in, in my stomach, in my body when I knew I didn't have, that aspect of my life and I found myself I was living in Toronto at the time and I was living in a room it was just a room it was about eight foot by about 16 foot and that's all I had it was no no lounge room it was there was uh, no you know no couch or anything like that all, all there was was a bed there was a toaster oven and a mini fridge and wow. uh, my biggest challenge back then was stopping the the mice in the walls from scratching holes through to my room. <laughs> oh wow! And uh, and that was the that was the wake up call. That was the sort of thing to say, okay, let's put one foot in front of the other, and start getting into more of a uh, more of a direction. Nice. Now, I mean that that's got to be tough because, like you said, you went to school for six years. Correct. And Correct. so years. you you know kind of went into psychology, but then realized oh, well, you probably don't want to get into that career path. So what yeah. what kind of things were, because that's tough for a young person realizing like, oh, okay, well, I made this decision, but that's not fulfilling. So yeah. kind of share, you know, what was like, what was, what was going through your head and, you know, what kind of fears and stuff, you know, where yeah, you had I mean- at that time. I mean, back then I had literally no clue and there was so much uncertainty, so much doubt because uh, I was interested in it. I, I finished with a master's in um, human resources, so learning all, everything about organizational psychology. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and then had no clue. I know there was like a little voice that says, I want to help everyday people with everyday things. Didn't know what that looked like. I ended up emailing uh, Dr. Phil at one point. I emailed Dr. Phil and said, how do you get on stage and help normal, normal people do normal stuff? And I'm still waiting on the reply about <laughs> six years later. Um, but it was, yeah, it was sort of, that was the calling for me to just say, you know, let's just put one foot in step in fr- one foot in front of the other. And I got into personal development and started reading everything in terms of, in terms of uh, health, in terms of wealth, in terms of, in terms of happiness and fulfillment and, and all the, all the awesome topics that can help you gain some clarity. And the, the real big shift for me was when I uh, invested half of everything I had in the bank and jumped into my first coaching program with, with Tony Robbins. And that was online while I was still in Canada. And that was my, it was such a huge fear around money and scarcity and lack mm-hmm. of money, especially I was a poor traveling Australian going yeah. around doing, uh, you know, trying to have fun. But that was really a huge decision for a couple of reasons. One, it was me following my heart instead of my head. Cause my head said, there's no way you can afford that amount of money. What if you go broke? What if you get kicked out of your house? What if you lose your job, you're screwed. And then yeah. basically uh, I had this calling, this inner voice that says, this feels like something you're meant to do is be a coach. It be, mm. is, to, is to study things, study the, the tactics, tools and strategies to help everyday people uh, achieve their goals. And that's, that's really what I, what I started when I, when I leapt into that. So you talked about joining the Tony Robbins coaching program. How did you like that? Yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. That was really the, the starting point for me. As soon as I started studying uh, and, and seeing how Tony creates huge shifts and, mm. um, and I remember watching the intervention videos in the, in the coaching program and I was just like bawling my eyes out. For some reason, this is what hits me is, is when someone starts to realize that their problems and their challenges are just surface level and actually there's something a lot deeper. And when they can actually dive in deep and, and start to uncover the real reasons why they're in pain, then everything on the surface starts to shift. And doing that type of deep inner work and helping people really start to see, you know, the depths of their life and what's yep. actually the challenge just hits me emotionally so much. And so that's really where I started um, getting some hints around, this is something that I'm meant to do. This is something that uh, it's, it's hitting me in my core. Um, and so that's when I started to move back to Melbourne where I'm from and, uh, and start my own online coaching business. And that was about four and a half, yeah, four and a half years ago. Nice. Now, was there one personal shift that you really took to kind of help you? Cause obviously taking that first step is probably the hardest, you know, going from, okay, I, w- I want to do this full time, but that fear of, am I going to make enough? or whatever else but was there that one was there that one thing you could look back to that you did to kind of help you with those fears yeah i mean it really i mean going for so many years it's hard to it's hard to imagine because i'm still young but it was kind of for that many years of just not knowing and that many years of just having the uncertainty and then all of a sudden this is presented in front of you that's like this could be the key. It's like, I'm like, I'm willing to go broke. I'm willing for anything to happen. Right. right. And so that's really, that was a huge, huge shift um, to just say like, to just have some perspective and say, what, what's the harm? Because even if you do fail, even if you go broke, even if everything, uh, you know, everything goes downhill, you've, you've done that by, following your passion and following your heart. Mm. And so I have the, I have the, uh, the sort of philosophy now, as soon as I follow my heart, I'm willing to either get the opportunities that are necessary and that, that mm-hmm. present themselves or learn the lessons that I'm meant to learn. And so I did, I had the same thing when I started my coaching business It started growing um, and I was struggling for a few years and I was still working a side job um, at a restaurant. When I left that job, uh, when I left the job at the restaurant, I wasn't making much money in either of them, right? In either the coaching business or the restaurant. But my heart said, leave the, leave the job and coach full time for whatever reason, like just, just take that leap. 
And right in the same thing in that moment, I was either willing to receive the opportunities that it presents with that higher level of consciousness, higher level of vibration by following my heart, or I was willing to learn the lessons that were necessary that I'm meant to learn, whether that be go broke, whether that be have no clients, whether that be, you know, have sitting confusion for a year, whatever it may be. Like I'm, I'm willing to do that because what more, what more of a worthy cause is there than following the heart's guidance of the reason why you're here. I don't think there's any bigger purpose. Nice. So just kind of finally able to listen to that inner voice and realize, you know, okay, this is tough, but taking that step, the benefits could far outweigh any fears I have right now. You got it. You got it. And the biggest fears for me, uh, so to to sort of sum up my story where I'm at right now. So four and a half years started the, started the coaching business, struggled for a few, for a few years. It's only about, six to eight months ago i had another huge shift because i was sort of struggling in the coaching business sort of i was getting by i was making some money i was um, growing my growing my audience and things like that but huge shifts started happening for me when i started realizing that i was starting to be attached to the results so Mm. i was hiring business coaches i was doing all the i was doing the inner work in terms of achieving I all of a sudden found myself what I call now is stuck in the achiever phase of consciousness. So I've moved from victim when I was in Canada, I moved from victim into achiever. So now life wasn't happening. So I moved from life happening to me to now life's happening from me where I'm now in control of my life. Now I found myself stuck in the achiever phase where I found myself, every single solution was take more action, do a different strategy, uh, hustle and grind more. And I found myself, attached to the results. I found myself attached to, I think I need to achieve this in order to feel enough. I feel like I need to achieve this in order to feel worthy. I feel like I need money in order to feel safe. Mm. And that's when I found myself being in a position where I no longer had to focus primarily on, on external hustle and grind and action and shifting my state and changing different strategies and that sort of thing to actually sitting down and looking at that very pattern. So it was no longer, it was no longer me taking action. It was now sitting down and actually doing extended meditation. And the first day I did it, it was for six hours. I sat in silence for six hours Mm -hmm. just to see what would come up. All the guilt, the doubt, the frustration, the fear, everything so that I could, uh, I could notice them and allow those patterns to transcend. And that's, it created such big shifts in my life. I started to continue that for about, seven or eight months now I've meditated for two hours a day in silence. I don't think everyone needs to do that. Don't freak out. Um, this is just my experiment, but it's just something that it's been such a huge shift for me to look inward and start to, and start to really, uh, receive answers rather than try and go outside and, and, um, and try to find them because what I found is now my consciousness has shifted from achiever to receiver. And this is what I help people do as well. It's, it's, it's moving from that achiever phase. If you feel like you're stuck in the achiever phase, it really is in your expansion to move to the receiver, which is a higher level of consciousness, which is now you're starting to receive your guidance at higher levels. You're starting to receive higher levels of creativity, of flow, of alignment. Um, and, and when you start to do that, the world externally will start to mirror what you feel inside. And so that's really, a, that was a huge shift for me as well. Yeah, I I love um, meditation. It just really helps, you know, you don't have to worry about the future and have anxiety about the past and it really allows you to be present in the moment. Mm. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And I find so many business owners can can use this because in the, in a in a way, you know, in a way they can start to observe their fears. They can start to observe their yeah. like I said their anxieties and allow that allow that side of them to come up and allow that side to transcend and um it's a huge shift it's a huge shift for business owners who are taught in the modern day world to hustle and grind mean success and i think the consciousness of the the planet shifting to a point where that's no longer true and so um and so this is this is my this is my experiment and so if you want to want to follow along and see what happens to me then uh, feel free to do that cool now um you kind of talked about that pattern that kind of held you back do you find with other you know business owners is that is the same kind of pattern holding them back 
or is there something yeah, different? Totally, totally. It's 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 generally all um, the primary because I've uh, out of the hundreds I've coached, hundreds of business owners I've coached in the last couple of years, it really does follow this underlying pattern that says they're trying to get the next level of success in order to yep. fill a void within themselves. Mm. They're trying to get the next level of success to feel enough or to feel worthy or to feel safe, whatever it may be. And from what I'm finding is that if you try to build a business from that standpoint and it's no longer in your expansion, then it's just not the, it's just not the resourcefulness to build a business and to build a sustaining business. Cause even if you do achieve, you will still live in fear because if, if your success, if your worthiness and your love and your joy is found external to you, even if you achieve, you're going to live in fear that you're going to lose it. Right. Cause it's still outside of you. Yeah, I, I refer this to money all the time. If you think you need money to feel safe, uh, even when you achieve the money, you're not going to you're not going to feel uh, safe because it's outside of you. You're going to live in fear that you're going to lose it, or you think you need more and more and more. Yeah, and that's the that's the pattern that I find. Um, and, and if anyone's stuck in business, it comes down to that pattern at some point. Now, what what would be the kind of the best tips you could give other people to kind of help get out of this pattern? Yeah. So first of all, so many people, when they have this fear come up, like this fear of failure, this fear of judgment, right? Whatever it may be, fear of going broke. Yeah. They basically either one, avoid the pattern, avoid the feeling, or they resist it. So they, 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 they distract themselves. They do something different or they try to achieve so that they don't have to feel it or they resist it and think something's wrong. They think they need to be fixed. They think they should be feeling something different. Mm. Right. And that's like a five-year-old. If you think a five-year-old comes up to you in the park and they're scared, let's say they've lost their parents. Would you say to that five-year-old go away until you feel better? Right. Or would you say to that five-year-old it's wrong. You're feeling that way. You shouldn't be feeling that way. You should Mm. be feeling something different. You need to be fixed. Of course we wouldn't. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's what we do to our internal five-year-olds. Our internal five-year-olds are coming up in the forms of fear, doubts, frustrations, who have particular beliefs about who we need to be and what the world needs to be like in order for us to feel enough. Yeah. And that's what we do to our internal five-year-olds. When we have fear, we say, oh, I've not, this needs to change. It needs to be fixed. It needs to, um, you know, I, I should be feeling something different. And therefore, we just push that five-year-old down and it grows unconsciously. Uh, the advice I would give someone or the tips I would give someone is to actually allow that five-year-old to surface and actually feel it, actually mm-hmm. feel the emotion, actually allow it to be there, hold the loving safe space for it to be there because it's coming up so it can come out and no fear can continue in a space where it's actually seen and actually heard, actually understood, actually loved but all fear will continue in a space where, where you don't want it to be there. So if you allow the fear to be there and you hold the safe space for it, it will actually start to transcend in its own time. And so that's where, that's where business owners can have the, the biggest breakthroughs, the, the biggest shifts and can start to build their business as a success, just as a byproduct of, of that type of shift. Yeah. So look internally before, you know, kind of looking externally. Yeah. Totally. Looking really up. That's that's great. Now embracing that that inner self instead of you know denying it, avoiding it, resisting it. Now we've looked internally. What can we do to achieve better results in business after that? Then. Yeah, I mean, if once you once you start to transcend these patterns, once the patterns start to they're they're felt and they're loved and they actually move on. What's what's left is like a like a, a bottomless well of just creativity and flow and alignment. Like if you're stuck in confusion, trust me, it's all the answers are, are within. So all you need to do is be the, the observer of all these patterns that are, that are coming up and, and releasing. And then you'll start getting nudges from your heart. You'll start getting this creativity and this flow, this alignment and following that, you're being guided by something that's so much bigger than what your mind can see so much bigger than your ego who wants success or money or fame or attention, whatever it may be. You're being guided by something that's so much more. You're being guided by something that's so much uh, more in purpose, so much more in flow. 
And so listening to what your heart guides you towards with that extra flow and creativity, uh, pouring that into your business, you can't not thrive. You can't not thrive when you pour that into your business because you, you're, you're sitting in a place of accepting everything inside, accepting yeah. all the feelings and patterns inside. Therefore, unconsciously, you'll start to accept everything that happens outside. And therefore, you'll no longer be attached to the circumstances, the results, the outcomes, other people, all those different things. And you'll just be following what feels aligned uh, within you. That's, that's great. Now, what, what kind of strategies could you tell people to kind of help them uh, find more of that inner peace in their lives? Yeah. I mean, it's huge. It's huge. Inner peace is, is what really comes first. So first of all, I would say sit down and just breathe. <clears throat> Whatever feels in your expansion. If it's tough for you to go five minutes, uh, go five minutes. If, it's, if it yeah. feels like it's tough for you to go 20 or 30 or, or, or 60 minutes, sit down in silence and push yourself to, to just observe because giving you that space for all that, all those patterns to come up and to be released is a huge first step. So just breathing with it, allowing it to be there, noticing what it feels like in your body. So for me, the, the heaviness in my stomach, I would allow the heaviness to be in my stomach and welcome it and then pay close attention to the detail and say, does it feel heavy? Does it feel jagged? Does it feel empty? Is it pulsating? Is it moving? right? And paying really close attention to it. You might actually want to exaggerate it a little bit, exaggerate the feeling a little bit. Um, so you can pay closer attention to it. Um, and then just being in the space of allowing it to be there and you don't actually have to do anything with it. All you have to do is just be there and it will transcend in its own time, right? Call it, you know, your unconscious mind or call it, you know, the, the divine or, or universe, whatever you want to say, that'll move it on in its own time. All you have to do is just feel it and love it and, um, and hold the safe space for it. So that would be my, that they would be my steps just to breathe, sit down in silence, feel it and pay close attention to it in terms of what it's doing. And, um, and while you're doing that, pay attention to your heart, pay attention to the side of you that's holding space for it and feel the, feel the love, feel the safety while also feeling the fear and the doubt and the worry and hold safe space for it all. And you'll start to get huge, huge insights in terms of the relationship with your pain. Yeah, that's great. Um, and, you know, going back to, you know, talking about meditation. And I know you said that, you know, you, you were able to kind of sit in that for hours. But, you know, a lot of people can just take a few minutes a day. Totally. Whether that's yeah, in totally. the morning when they wake up, before they go to bed, whatever the case, right? Whatever I say with, when I say with my clients, I'm like, whatever feels in your expansion, like whatever feels is on your edge is like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can uh, move past that. Because the reason why I sat down for six hours in one day was because I didn't want to do it. And I was scared of what I had to face, which is yeah. exactly why I needed to do it, right? Yeah. What I find is when you sit down in silence, the very reasons why you feel you can't are the very reasons why you should, right? Because I had this... The, I, when I sat down, I'm like, oh, I feel guilty. I feel guilty that I'm not working, right? So I sat down and I felt that guilt and I just did the steps that we just explained there. And the guilt was up. I felt guilt for probably about three or four minutes and then it transcended, then it moved on. So I didn't want to sit down because I'd feel guilty, but in fact, I needed to sit down so I could feel guilty. There was a five-year-old within me that said, that has the belief that I need to be working to feel enough. I need to be achieving to feel enough. And that's the five-year-old that I had to look at. That's the five-year-old that I had to love unconditionally so that I could, so that it could transcend and move on so that I could access a deeper level of creativity, a deeper level of love, a deeper level of peace, right? Cause we all have these five-year-olds within us. The five-year-olds that when we're young believe who we need to be, and what we need to do in order to feel enough, in order to feel loved. Because when we're children, we link love to survival. Mm -hmm. right? if, we're not, if we're not loved, we won't survive. So we have strategies on what we need to do and what works to get the love uh, from those significant people that mean our survival. And those five-year-olds are still coming within us 
they're still they're, they're lying dormant within us. Uh, most people are building businesses from that standpoint, from that from that energy of I need to build a business to feel safe, to feel enough, to feel worthy, right? And so sitting with it, I find sitting down in silence and sitting down in meditation, instead of building a business to s satisfy the five-year-old, look at the five-year-old. Look at the five-year-old that's coming up. Because if you do that, that five-year-old will transcend. And now you can build your business from love, from creativity, from flow, from alignment, from resourcefulness, instead of from fear, from scarcity, from lack, and trying to feel enough. Yeah. Now, can you, can you share with us, you know, what, um, what's kind of transcended for you since that, you know, six, eight months ago, when you really took that step, what kind of successes or, you know, benefits have you experienced since then? Yeah, totally. So I, first of all, sitting down in silence and I transcended so much, so many fears, so many fears around money, so much uncertainty around my business, so much sadness around past relationships i mean i would sit there and just feel this pain but while i was in pain i also felt peace when you're in your heart you can feel both your head is like a dichotomy it's one or the other when you're in your heart i just felt so much sadness but also so much peace and so much love and so much safety um, and so much transcendent and so much came up that i had no clue was in me and that's the important part. Like if it's coming up, it's still in you, regardless of what you do and how you do it and, and what you feel consciously, it's still in you, still running your decisions, your actions, your moods, your results. Yeah. And so all that transcended for me and it still does. Like I still just work deeper and deeper and deeper. You know, I still catch myself feeling anxiety or stress or worry. And that's the perfect thing because they're still in me. And so it's the perfect opportunity to just go deeper and to transcend that. But to answer your question, the creativity and the flow that came from, you know, releasing these emotional patterns was just like mm -hmm. my heart's guidance of saying, uh, you know, kick off your Facebook group, right. Or, or, you know, start this, do, do this topic or do this live and you just get insights. Like I just had this calling to kick off my Facebook group to grow it and just to fall in love with serving. And that's just, that's exactly what I've done. I've just, it's felt so in flow. It's felt so aligned. It's now over a thousand members who are really, really engaging yeah. like two to 3000 pieces of engagement per month. And, and I just love that community. And that's just really been the, the, the platform of my, of my business success and my coaching success, which allows me to do it full time, just as a byproduct of what's flowing through me, right. Mm. Moving from the achiever to the receiver. I just receive answers and I just act on what's flowing through me and mm -hmm. it's never steered me wrong. And, um, and every, and people just comment me all the time on how authentic and real and, and valuable, you know, I am. And, and it's because I'm listening in, it's because I'm doing the inner work. And so that's just, that's just what I found is that your, your heart will guide you to something that is, uh, will never steer you wrong. And it's part of your purpose. Nice. Well, thanks for sharing all that. Um, now, can you share a little bit more about um, Tyson coaching? Yeah, sure. I mean, this is, it's, it's my passion. It's sort of, <laughs> clearly this stuff just, just flows from me. Right now, I just love coaching uh, online business owners who are doing it as part of their calling. If, you have, if you're listening to your heart and you're following something that's, that's in you, yeah. that, that is a mission, that's a purpose, and building an online business is part of that, um, they're the people who I love helping, who I love helping not only transcend these emotional patterns, but heighten their level of consciousness, right? Where they're not only moving from achiever to receiver, but they want to move from like receiver to, you know, oneness or something that's, that's a lot higher. Um, but that's really my passion is helping business owners transcend these fears by heightening their level of consciousness. And it's just, it's, it's an absolute pleasure. I just, I love my clients. I love working with them. I love the results they're getting. And it's part of my purpose. This is, well, this is what I'm here to do ever since I started watching the Tony Robbins videos of his interventions and I was bawling my eyes out um, to now doing this kind of work. It, it just, it feels, it feels at, at peace. It feels on purpose. And it's, uh, yeah, this is, this is my calling. Nice. Can you, um, is there, 
an example of, you know, someone you've worked with that, uh, that you've helped, um, you know, could you share, you know, something that kind of transcended in, in that person? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Um, one of my, one of my clients, uh, so he's, he's been successful on Instagram. He's made over a million dollars on Instagram. Mm. Um, he started working with me cause he wanted to start making a shift towards his calling, mm-hmm. his, his, his Dharma, right? He wanted to start doing something that was more fulfilling. And I had two rules for him. I said, one, wait, if you start with me, one, you have to allow all emotions. You have to, you have to be willing to feel all emotions. And two, if you get a heart's pull or a heart's guidance, you have to take that leap. You have to follow that. No matter how stupid it sounds, no matter how scary it is, you have to do that. So he has, you know, the Bentley and the, and the uh, you know, eight bedroom house that he lives in by himself. And uh, he got this heart's calling that says, sell everything. So, and you know, it's from your heart when it's very direct, you know, it's from your heart when it's very straightforward and it's very clear. And it's, it said, sell everything, sell everything and be a digital nomad and, and, uh, and help people with heightening their level of consciousness. He's been following my work and he, he was aligned with helping people shift this type of, uh, make this type of shift. And exactly like what he did, he put his house up for sale, uh, looking to sell his car and he's, uh, going to have that have that that uh that money to basically help his uh help his family and he's just going to travel and follow his heart full time mm. and uh it's those sort of shifts where i'm like man if how much more of an impact can you make when you're following that compared to you know the, the money and the and the results and the opportunities will be just a byproduct of, of him doing that and that's what i found within myself that's what i find within all my clients as well Great. Thanks for sharing that story. So um, now we'll uh, get into our speed round. I'll ask you five quick questions and you just give me the first answer that pops into your head. Sure. All right. So what do you do for fun? For fun, I exercise, play music, uh, drink green tea. <laughs> um, I just love, I also just love dancing. I love, love dancing. It's just so much fun. Um, People won't really pick that, but yeah, I love, I won't drink. I'll just go out with some drinking water and I'll just go on a dance floor and have a good time. Nice. What's your favorite quote? Um, my favorite, favorite quote that comes to mind is uh, all answers are found in silence. Every, mm. All answers are found in silence. That's what I find. All the deep answers, not the superficial surface answers that your ego wants but the deep answers that you that your heart desires are all found in silence mm. who has inspired you the most uh right now right now it's a lot of wayne dyer <clears throat> right now oh, it's a yeah. lot of wayne dyer and mm. um his his type of work's been really really impactful for for my type of uh my type of journey yeah i like him a lot <clears throat> uh what's your favorite book at the moment, I'm reading the Tao Te Ching. For those who haven't read it, uh, I, I love injecting ancient wisdom into modern day business. If you, mm. I find this is what's missing in modern day business is is ancient wisdom. And the Tao Te Ching is written by Lao Tzu 2,500 years ago. It's called. It's been branded by most as one of the most wise books. It's been, uh, besides the Bible, the most um, the most translated book in, in the world. Mm. And applying the lessons and the principles in the Tao Te Ching has, has really added a layer of peace and fulfillment in, in my life and in my business as well. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Hey, what's a really good tool or resource you could recommend? Tool or resource. I mean, I think you are your biggest resource. I mean, if you're the, the, the spirit and heart you have in here, that's all you need. It really is all you need. It's 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 following that. It's uncovering that that calling, that desire, that pull for you. That's the the only resource you need right now. And then once you follow that, you can couple that with all the modern day tactics, tools, strategies of online business building. I find that is just the the winning formula for this the type of consciousness we're in right now. Awesome. Now, how can people listening connect with you further? 
Uh, so if you're listening to this podcast, I mean, simply hop over to my podcast. It's called Awaken Your Business. Um, I go deep into all these sort of you know, practical exercises you can do this, but also sharing things with my journey and, uh, and practical steps on how you can you know, follow that calling. Mm -hmm. um, if you're on Facebook, you can jump into the community I'm talking about, which is it's called Connect, Contribute, Collaborate. And it's all heart-centered business owners who are not only doing this work, but collaborating with each other to grow as one. And we also do what we can to, um, to make a difference around the world and to, um, and to contribute to some worthy causes. Like last month, we had an event where we contributed over 5,000, it was like 5,600 bowls of rice to children in Vietnam who have been saved mm. from trafficking and slavery and that sort of stuff. So it's a Facebook group who's not only engaging, but that we're doing what we can to really, really make a difference. It's such a cool crew. Awesome. I like hearing that. Well, thanks for sharing all that. Thanks for joining us today. And we'll make sure we put all your links uh, to your Facebook group, your podcast, you know, anything else. We'll put those in the show notes of this cool. episode. So, uh, yeah. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Paul. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Well, um, how are you? Uh, how are you doing? Staying safe? with everything that's happening. It's kind of weird. Yeah. I mean, I was working online full time before all this, all yeah. this coronavirus. So my day to day life hasn't changed. Um, but we're all good here in Australia. It's just, we're just doing what we can to, to help and to serve and to, and to, um, you know, being in a, in a place of contribution to those who do need it. And, um, that's why I started doing daily episodes on my podcast and stuff like that to just, just serve the community who are, who are home, who are, uh, you know, looking for guidance, who are just looking for things to do around the house and to build their business and things like that. So just being in a place of service, but yeah, all up where we're pretty fine over here. I hope you enjoyed today's interview with Tyson. I loved how he talked about looking and really diving into your inner self to find that peace so you can transcend your personal life and your business. Now you can access the show notes of this episode on our website, www.inspiringshow.com. Please join our Facebook group, follow us on Instagram, and leave a positive review if you enjoy our podcast. And if you would like to join as a friend of the podcast, we would love your support. You can click membership in the menu of our website, www.inspiringshow.com inspiringshow.com. You receive a lot of great perks, so check it out. And so until next time, remember, you have a story and your story matters. <laughs> <laughs>